on this episode of AV Week. Holy cow, a number of partnerships within the industry. Lodges, Heck, Crestron, Bose, and Sennheiser, what that means for the industry. Also taking a look at Avixa, the Diversity Council, and what it means for the future of AV. All that and more, next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 444, recorded Friday, February 21st, 2020. A splash of color. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Vadio. Makers of the new NDI professional broadcast camera, the RoboShot 30E NDI. And by Christie Digital. And by Draper, focused on innovative solutions. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap-up of audiovisual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host. With us to discuss the news and information we have gathered this week, Miss Dawn Mead. Welcome, ma'am. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, always. Uh, also with us are two gentlemen that sort of kind of went, went with me to ISC. They didn't go with me, but we were all three there. Uh, first and foremost, Mr. Steve Greenblatt from Control Concepts. Welcome, sir. Glad to be here. Uh, and a young man that I met for the first time in D.C. Uh, at a future event, uh, Mr. Christopher Hope from Loop Lab. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, great stuff. We're actually going to talk about one of the events that Chris was a part of uh, in, in, uh, at ISC uh, last week. Uh, first story, though, here we go. Uh, uh, two actually different stories. One's from our, uh, our, our website. One's from our, our friends over at AV Network and SCN. Two different partnerships. One is Crestron and Logitech. And actually, Crestron, uh, the Logitech story that, that AV Network and SCN has, uh, they had a great conversation with Randy Klein of Crestron and Scott Wharton from Logitech. Those two companies are getting together. And actually, there's around the huddle space. Crestron is making a big push, both with their, their uh, partnerships with, with Teams, as well as uh, the soft codex. Um, they're leveraging some of the technology and some of the hardware that, that Logitech has. On the other side of that, you've got Bose and Sennheiser getting together, uh, which is a story from our website, which is even more, which is also interesting. Again, surrounding the huddle space. One of the things, though, that in, in, in talking with the, 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 the folks at, at both Sennheiser and, and Bose, you have an, two audio companies here, and Don, I'm going to start with you on this. As Don is, is is our end user for this, but Don has also worked for integrators and done a bunch of other stuff in the industry. You've got folks who would ostensibly, if you step back and you look on paper, these are competitors, right? These are flat out competitors. Um, you can go down to Best Buy and you can pick up a pair of Sennheiser headphones and you can pair, pick up a pair of Bose headphones. Just for full disclosure, I've got both sitting on my desk right now, right? <laughs> Through that wall in my desk, I've got both sitting there. I am not going to make a determination on which ones I think are better. Um, the, the bows are newer, so I guess that, those are better to me right now. But in general, you've got a competitors here, right? Logitech and Crestron, we can make the argument that not really, but sort of, right? The bows and freaking Sennheiser, that, that also. So Don, as an end user now, what do partnerships like the, this mean? Does it help when you guys are looking at, or does it kind of muddy the waters and go, well, wait, we've, we've got a whole lot of players here that normally don't, don't play well together? Well, it, it's interesting because I kind of have two minds of this, mainly because I came from an integration background. On the one hand, as an end user, when I'm specifying for the enterprise and I'm dealing with folks that may be ordering and having their facilities groups at that location, do the work rather than bringing the AV team from Baltimore, um, you know, we, we, we run into, we want to make things easy. We want to make things seamless. The whole ecosystem discussion we had when everybody was buying everybody over the past couple of years, you know, you get this one ecosystem, you make it all very plug and play and everyone plays nice together if it's not the same company and it just works and end users love that. Um, on the other hand, you know, the, the skeptical part of me that was always an integrator was like, well, you know, I love a good ecosystem. I love making it easy for my end users. But if we're integrating things into a single product, one little feature breaks, you have to replace the whole thing. You know, it's what we saw with some of these monitors that had the built-in computers back way, way back to the Ampro Alice projector days, the big giant projector with the built-in computer. Computer went down. That projector was a 400-pound, you know, 
paperweight. There was no still using the projector without the onboard computer part. So I think if they start integrating the products into making these one product to rule them all, you know, single piece items, that's problematic. And, and also having been an end user, you know, I have my favorite brands, you have your favorite brands, my company has its favorite brands. What if our favorite control company partners with a camera company we don't like? I'm not saying we don't like Logitech. I'm not saying we do like Crash Drawn. I'm not saying we don't. But, you know, if, if these partnerships pair a product that you're not in love with, with a product that is your bread and butter, then it can be problematic if, because, you know, they're going to want to protect their yard. They're going to want to protect their property and make it a little harder. I mean, not that they would, but make it a little harder to use with the other guy's product, even if a particular end user thinks it's the best. So I'm of two minds of this. It could be very good for the industry, but there are some things to watch out for. All right. Chris, can these companies get along? That, that's, that is one, one question that kind of kept popping up, not just last week, but when we've had other stories like this, specifically the ones that, that where you have, I'm going to call it direct competitors, right? Is it possible for these folks to kind of put different sides and different verticals for them, right? So different business groups in, in their own little silos and say, never these two will touch. Over here, though, we're going to do business and we're going to, we're going to make some difference and make some money. Can that happen in, in, in the real world? Listen, uh, the reality of it is, is that the AV industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And at the end of the day, people are already integrating these products. They're already yeah. using these products in unity, in unison. Um, and so being able to just create them and package them already integrated um, for many people that are, are using some of these brands um, separately is, is really an awesome opportunity. So I, I think it's really smart. Uh, for some of these companies that have products that definitely um, are compatible and are used together um, often by different companies, especially for these huddle rooms, huddle room spaces, um, to really be able to leverage that aspect of the market. Now, I, I think that this is capturing more and more of what's becoming a niche as we're seeing more of this uh, happen between companies and corporations. And I expect that in the next five years, we're going to see this grow. Um, I think that we're going to see this in other areas outside of just other rooms, um, you know, talking about flex spaces, but going into conference spaces and, and more. And so I, I just, I think there's exciting possibility there. I, I definitely do share Don's uh, kind of conservative um, uh, perspective. I, I do think that there is something about uh, the need to customize the end user's needs and understanding that there could be some challenges there. I mean, to have the option, I don't think, you know, it's a bad thing to have the option on the table for, for the end user. All right, very good. Mr. Greenblatt, isn't this what we do in the industry? Uh, not to be coy, and Chris already kind of mentioned the fact that, that we already, we, we do this, right? This is what the integration uh, industry does. This is what audiovisual integrators do, is they make products work together. What happens when the manufacturers kind of cut us out of that and doing it on their own and making it easier for us? So that, that's been just a, a lot of the talk of the industry in general you know, and, and uh, in, in my world and, and the, uh, you know, control systems and, and the, the idea that we can now make something work with a number of mouse clicks rather than having to write a lot of code, that, that's a good example of this happening. Uh, when it comes down to it, we're here to serve the clients, right? And we, and so we, we need to make sure that we want to offer them something that's going to be, that's going to serve their needs. And that's, as an industry, what we need to be able to be, we need to be focusing on because that, that they're the ones that pay the, pay the bills. <laughs> and so um, if, if that's, that, that's where the, so, so I also think too, that there's a, a larger, uh, um, demand for solutions. So these are going to be likely in, in rooms that are not rooms that we would have been outfitting with larger, more uh, complex and integrated systems anyway. Yeah. So, it, and it could be a nice way to get a foot in the door to be able to look at managed services and lo look at trying to use this as a stepping stone into larger, more, more um, integrated systems as, as the client needs. All right. One, one question though, Steve, as a follow-up to that, 
yes, we are here to serve the client, but as integrators, you can't do that if you're not in business, <laughs> if you're not right. in business, right? So I, I guess, are we just having to, we're, we're going to have to, as, as an industry, find different ways to monetize um, the things that we do. For sure. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's been a challenge that, that a lot of us have been facing for some time. Uh, they, we, we can't really rely on, on what, uh, on easy systems, let's call them anymore. Thanks so much for watching this first segment of AV Week. If you want to see the rest of the episode, click on the link below. Check it out for free, or you can go by the website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.